Hey, and welcome guys. Uh, today, we're just doing a little simple project. This is a 3D printed project. Uh, as you can see here, I have the Star Trek Steam Runner class ship that I 3D printed. Now, I pulled this file from Thingiverse. It's, it was a free file. Uh, if I remember, I'll try to include that link on the uh, video here, because I think it's a pretty nice little file, especially for being free. I did upscale it a little bit, um, maybe 110, 115%. Um, probably should have gone a little bit bigger. I'll explain more about that in a second. Uh, so anyway, I went ahead and attached a little support rod to make it easier once I start painting. Uh, but I been working on the surface where I had all my supports. I had it um, kind of supported in this kind of configuration where all the supports were on the bottom. So there's some, if you look closely, you can probably see where I've been sanding away some of the marks left by the supports from the 3D print. I did have some of the supports failed and there's some little wonkiness to right in this part of the ship, but otherwise it came out pretty good. Um, I've also have lost some detail back here where I've had to sand away. I had quite a few supports because that was actually the first uh, part that was getting supported was this back of uh, the deflector dish. And it looks like we had some photon torpedo launchers. Um, now the thing about this particular ship is I'm going to make it one uh, 1400 scale, even though it's uh, Technically, it shouldn't be that. It should be uh, much smaller scale, or yeah, than that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of these uh, leftover decals from my Enterprise E, especially most notably these uh, escape pods or lifeboats, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to use that to decorate our ship. Um, I think that will make a nice feature. Now I've already sanded away quite a bit of details if I can get this into focus here. There was these tiny little escape pods here and I'm sending those away because I'm going to run those decals along here, here, um, maybe a few other areas I think up in this area. And I just want to do a nice paint job and one thing I'm going to do is very flat here and I've lost a lot, some of the uh, uh, detail from the uh, ship design here. So I think we're going to take some very thin styrene and kind of build up a few layers just to give it a little bit more detail. So on the bottom won't be too noticeable, um, but I think I'm going to try to do that and maybe in a few little other areas. And then from there, uh, just painting it up. I want to do a good paint job to it. Obviously it's solid. It won't be lit or anything like that. But I think it'll make a nice little ship once we get it painted and use some of these. I have a bunch of leftover Star Wars or I'm sorry, Star Trek decals. So I'll be utilizing that. I'll use one of these names. I know it won't be te technically correct um, from what we know of Star Trek lore. It won't be canon by any means. It won't be scaled right. So it's going to be my ship and I'm going to do with it to make it do what I want to do with it to make it look good. And hopefully it'll turn out decent. So I'm just going to get started. Uh, still working on the body work. I'm finished sanding those marks away and add on some uh, styrene to give a little bit more detail, especially on that bottom section. All right, as you can see here, I've done some of the painting and I'm working on masking off and painting some of these uh, um, lifted panel de details on the ship here. I did a gray primer coat and then a base coat of this stonewall gray. It was the lightest gray I had on hand. And now I'm going over with uh, some gray Z from Mecha Color to do the darker panels. And um, so this is kind of slow going. Now I just stopped and put a matte acrylic finish on this to kind of protect this because I'm going to be masking some of these other panels on there. And I think when I get done with that, I'm going to give it a gloss coat. I'm going to try something risky. I'm going to try to do a little bit of a oil wash or some kind of panel line accent color to get in all these tiny windows here. Um, so I need to do a gloss coat so I can get it off. Of. If I try to do that with the matte paint, it's going to absorb in there. I don't want to stain it too bad. Um, so if you're seeing the, this part of the video, then I guess it's turned out okay enough for me to post a video of it. So anyway, uh, that's the plan is to do some of more of these panels. I'm not going to worry about every single one, especially up in here. There's some outline panels 
and I'll just that's going to be really hard to mask off. And I'm going to be using decals to kind of take up a lot of that area. So just trying to give it a lot of visual interest. It's a small model, so I'm not trying to worry about cover every little um, panel there is. I just want to give it some, uh, make it look cool and uh, give it a little bit of character. All right, so here's my progress. I finished uh, the painting I did on these uh, plates here, done it with that darker gray, the gray Z. Uh, once I finished uh, doing all of that, I applied a gloss clear coat, uh, just the Rust-Oleum gloss clear coat. Uh, let that dry to give us a nice protective layer. And now I'm going in doing a little bit of the detail work, as you can see here. I first um, took a little black oil paint mixed with some mineral spirits and a very fine paintbrush and just started filling in all the little windows. Uh, you can, if it kind of spreads a little bit, this is where the gloss coat's important because you need to be able to wipe it off. But if you get too much, you can just take a um, Q-tip and wipe it off. But also you can allow it to, if it's, uh, once it's dry, if it's a little bit over the windows, you can just clean off the surface and it should leave the uh, oil paint inside the windows, the inset windows. Uh, you can see where I've done the uh, phaser banks and the, I believe these are transport emitters. And I just took some of these uh, metallic markers. Um, I have a gold and a, I guess a copper color here. Yeah, copper and gold. So it had some different colors going on with those. Again, this is where the uh, gloss coat's important because it can seep into um, matte colors and kind of spread. So I need to kind of touch this up a little bit more. It's a little, I probably have run my finger across it and wiped it off. Um, but from here, I'm going to let this sit for a little bit and I'm going to start applying decals and we'll go from there. All right, well, everything's starting to look uh, pretty good here. Still some work to do. Uh, applying lots of decals on here. Uh, uh, just a variety, a hodgepodge of um, mostly Federation type ships. I gave the name of our ship as the USS Pegasus. There's a leftover decal from my um, 1 1000 kit that had uh, the uh, Oberf class, I believe, ship in it. Um, and it had several names. I did add on a little A just to kind of maybe this was the next version of the Pegasus. I believe the Pegasus was in that next generation um, episode with the scientific cloaking device, if I'm not, uh, if I'm correct about that. But anyway, uh, I believe these decals are from a 1 1000 scale TOS era. I could be wrong about that. This is a variety of decals, and I really think they've uh, added on to the look. Uh, I think Federation models are all about the uh, decals. Um, a little bit of decals right here just to give it a little bit of um, a little bit more detail. Quite a few little decals going on around uh, the deflector dish area back here. And then I finished that up with a clear acrylic matte coat. Now to finish it up I got to do decals on the bottom. Probably won't be as many on the top. I'm going to put some light boats and some markings, stuff like that. And then uh, I have to paint the Bizarre collectors and the tiller grills, and we'll be done. So when I come back, we'll take a look at the finished model. All right, well, here's our finished 3D printed Steamrunner class Starship. Um, finished up with a little detail painting, as you can see here, I did the Bizarre collectors, the tiller grills. Now, I was, I was watching the episode, First Contact, where we're fighting the Borg, and it doesn't look like those are lit. It just looks like they were kind of dark. Um, there's just these very brief instances where you kind of see it on screen. Um, so if I were to do it again, I probably just would paint this like a dark gray or black. Um, I did paint it blue. Of course, the uh, Bizarre Collector's red. And then I uh, just brushed over some of this uh, UV resin and, and then hit my uh, UV light on it to uh, harden it. And it gives you that kind of gloss look. I did that. Only thing on here is these are kind of recessed. So I put some in there. So turned out being, you can see it a little bit on camera, so it's not completely smooth. So I really not very happy of how that turned out. And in my mind, it was going to be a lot better. But um, this uh, resin, particular resin is really thick and it doesn't really level off that well. Um, it did great for the Bessard collectors because I was just doing a, a thin coat and trying to get that glossy glass look over it. And I think that turned out really good. But on these, I probably should have just painted those and let those be. Um, a little, same thing with the UV on the, uh, I guess, kind of a 
perhaps. I'm not sure what that is, but because uh, you're, uh, I used to think that was like an impulse engine, but your impulse engines are actually underneath the ship. I did the same thing with those painting them red with a little U, bit of uh, UV resin. So, oh no, it came out pretty good. It was just a, a weekend project. I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it. Mostly just a quick paint job and a little bit of masking off on these uh, panels up here in different areas, but a lot of uh, just random decals. Uh, I think the uh, skate pods and markings help add to the ship. And honestly, it kind of reminds me a lot of an Eagle Moss type uh, model that you can buy. Um, it's about the same size, about the same level of detail. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the project. It was just a quick, uh, fun project. Um, you know, not everything needs to be weeks and weeks long. Sometimes it's nice just to have a quick one you can knock out over the weekend. Until next time, everybody have a good one.